Right. Hello, uh, my name is Jonathan, and today I'll be presenting the uh, research I've been doing for the past 10 weeks um, towards nano optics uh, study of phonon polaritons in Van der Waals materials, specifically in tungsten oxide. And um, I've been working with Dr. Quan Chi Ni, and his lab focuses on nano optics, utilizing scanning probe mic microscopy um, to study polariton effects for Van der Waals materials. And what I've contributed is designing experimental equipment and developing a simulation model to compare material analysis utilizing the uh, scanning probes. So um, to go over what I basically said in summary is that Van der Waals materials are materials that are held together by very weak uh, bonding forces. And this allows them to be flexible and easily peeled into thin layers. Uh, a good example is graphene, which uh, shows ways in electric conductivity and strain. But specifically, I'm wanting to study an oxide, which has unique optical and electronic uh, properties, uh, such as hyperbolic plasmonic behavior, which is essentially um, electron oscillations on the surface of the material, uh, electrochromatic capabilities, which is um, the, the properties will change uh, when in the presence of an electromagnetic field. A tunable refractive index, which will allow us to uh, tune the materials uh, so we can um, test the different properties to see what's the ideal uh, state for the material um, for our experiments. And a strong linear optical response, which is how uh, the light will interact with the material and how we can modify um, the light itself using this material. And this can be used in sensing applications, um, electrochromatic windows, which are self-tinting windows, and other examples uh, that we'll talk about later. And polaritons are a quasi-particle that come from the strong interaction between the light and the matter in these materials, um, such as excitons and phonons, which is what I will specifically be focusing into. And these phonons are vibrational modes, which will help us learn about the thermal and mechanical properties of these materials. And lastly, we are using scanning probe microscopy, which is utilizing a sharp probe to scan the surface of a sample, uh, measuring the interactions at an atomic scale. Um, and this will produce uh, high quality images to help us gather more information. Um, and in my figures, it's an example of how one of these uh, microscopy works, such as the atomic force microscope, um, shooting an infrared light onto material to generate the polaritons, which are the vibrations that occur here, and then a crystal lattice of my material. So my methods, uh, I've been mainly using softwares uh, for the run of this about 10 weeks. Uh, specifically ANSYS Lumerical FDD-TD, which is a software that utilizes Maxwell's equations, uh, which um, describe the behavior of electromagnetic waves. Um, and then I've also have been using uh, Autodesk Inventor to design the equipment that will be utilized within the lab. Um, and then the figures uh, for the Lumerical simulation, uh, I have essentially simulated uh, an atomic force microscope um, emitting uh, electromagnetic wave on the surface of a tungsten oxide slab uh, of 100 nanometer, nanometer thickness. And it's surrounded by periodic boundary conditions, which help to simulate an infinite plane in the xy direction and perfectly matched layers on the z direction, which uh, helps to absorb scattering uh, electric fields, which allow us to get accurate results. While the Autodesk, I've been designing uh, multiple devices, such as a base plate for a uh, supporting optical table, a, a optical chamber for a cryostat, which is a device that allows us to lower the temperatures surrounding a material so we can test the properties at that temperature, and a um, plates that will create a mount for the cryostat as well. And so for my results on the figure six is a simulation of the electric field in the Z direction 
um, basically showing how uh, the scanning probe um, will shoot an electric field at the surface. And um, this is showing how the electric field will behave on the infinite slab. While on figure five, uh, these are the devices I've designed with the base plate and the frame I built um, onto a pneumatic table, which will allow us to have a very stable optical table to uh, perform um, precise experiments, while also a customizable adjustable mount that will allow us to place the cryostat at different heights so we can shoot um, use our different machines uh, for this cryostat. And it will be uh, to facilitate for the purpose of analyzing these 2D thin film materials. And then in conclusion, I would like to say that this presentation has highlighted the significant progress I have made in designing the equipment for our lab. And I will continue to develop the simulation to generate optical spectra and demonstrate the dispersion relations of these materials. Um, I will continue working with Dr. Quan Chi Ni uh, in his lab after this program ends, and I will be refining the simulation. Um, I will create a 2D transfer stage, which is essentially peels the layers of the materials off, and we're able to place the material onto other types of materials or uh, stack the material in different um, angles and layers to produce different effects. I will uh, continue sealing a vacuum chamber I've been working on to help um, generate a low vacuum environment for this material to be tested with. And I'm collaborating with Dr. Reyes to create a scanning probe for our lab. And uh, I would like to thank Kawana, uh, my research group with Dr. Ni, nee and uh, the entire RU program.